that was a lot of fun. In this video I'll be driving a Mark III Ford Escort and it's a real piece of time capsule treasure. It's not an XR3 or an RS Turbo but it's something much rarer than either of those. It's a very early Escort 55L van. It's an amazing survivor. Oh and by the way this van is actually for sale but more on that later. I'll be driving it back to its spiritual heartland, the factory here in South Wales where its engine was built. Here's the story. So what we've got here, we've got a basic steering wheel that is quite hard plastic, it's sort of slightly rubberized, basic two spoke thing, quite stylish, lights, wipers, a uh, three speed fan, loads of ventilation, speaker grill, uh, the really basic ones didn't have the speaker grill there, so this is uh, this is a 55L, so it's quite a posh one, so it's got that, uh, it's got a an aperture for where the radio should go. Glove box, proper glove box, none of your just a parcel shelf nonsense. Manual choke, obviously no rev counter, you've got temperature gauge, absolutely rock solid on this. Fuel gauge, speedo, mileometer, etc. Four speed gearbox, um, manual windows, that's about all there is to say in terms of equipment. The seats are, I think, not the original ones. Neil said they were out of a Escort bonus or some such, uh, so these are a bit of an upgrade, but not not a crazy one. Doesn't spoil the workmanlike ambience. Can you have workmanlike ambience? It's lively, it's not too big, it's very placeable. The ride is, well, the ride's okay. Uh, it's a little bit jiggly on uh, rough surfaces. Uh, it's Leaf Springs being a van at the back. Early Mark III Escorts were not famous for their ride quality. Well, actually they were notorious for their ride quality in some ways. But, uh, I mean, this is the van, so it's different suspension for a start. And secondly, of course, because it's a van, you hold it to a different standard. And I've got no complaints whatsoever. And even if the cars ride like this, then frankly, they're no worse and probably a bit better than uh, you know, modern cars with low profile tyres and suspension geared for doing top gear test track type antics. The 1300 engine is very over square, so that kind of suggests that peak torque would be very high at the rev range. In fact, actually, there seems to be plenty of torque on tap to, you know, pull away at the change of speed limit there in, uh, in fourth gear. So, no complaints on that score. It's not the, not the last word in soundproofing, of course, but that's all right. But feel how freely that revs, it's a really willing thing. No problem whatsoever keeping up with modern traffic. We're here because what you can see behind me is the remains of the Bridgend Ford engine plant. It opened in 1980 and it was created especially to build the CVH engines that went into the Mark III Escort, including this one. This has got the 1300 CVH engine and they did a 1.1 and a 1.6 as well. And there is the mighty 1300 CVH engine. CVH for compound uh, valve compound valve hemispherical i think uh, opinions seem to vary on what it actually stands for but it's a hemispherical head uh, for good combustion and it's a camion head engine so the compound valve angle thing is to do with the rocket arms are at a particular angle uh, can you tell that i'm reaching the limit of my technical knowledge here um, but anyway, it's a, ca it's a single overhead cam, cam in head, nice simple engine, robust, not the smoothest. Uh, they did get uh, criticised a little bit for their harshness in some applications, but that's not particularly an issue in a 1300cc van. Behold how rusty the strut towers aren't. I mean, it's scruffy, but it's, it's mostly pretty solid. There is the odd bit of speed lightning here and there. You can see the van was originally came out of the factory white, but somewhere very early on, probably for its first fleet owner, it got 
painted orange. We wonder if it's a ready mix concrete van, but it says white on there. New dizzy cap on there and and the belts all look nice and tidy. Can you see that? He sorted this car out mechanically. It's just um, and left it cosmetically as well as nature intended, I guess, because it's such a survivor. I mean, it's such an early one. They only started making these van versions in 81. September 1980 was when the Mark III Escort first hit the roads in the UK in, and I think in Europe in, uh, in hatchback form. So rare. 22 million engines were built here over 40 years, but now it's all fallen silent. Ford made the CVH engines and their derivatives in Bridgend for 20 years, and then the ZTEC and EcoBoost units. The plant also made engines for Volvo and Jaguar, and it was JLR's AJV6 and AJV8s that were the last blocks out of the doors before they closed for the last time in September 2020. It's not quite true that nothing has replaced it because uh, a few miles in that direction is St Athan where Aston Martin now has a new high-tech plant converted out of three old aircraft hangars at, uh, the, on the airport and air force base site. There is still car manufacturing going on in the neighbourhood but it's not the same scale or jobs or even that kind of sense of optimism that came uh, in the early 80s with this then state-of-the-art new Ford plant. I think I've ever so slightly fallen in love with this van. I love that it wears all its history, its layers of paint and its speed lightning holes and, uh, and so on. I also love that it's mechanically really well sorted as far as I can tell from this test drive. I think it's an absolute winner. And when did you last see a Mark III Escort van? Never mind a 1981 one. Uh, it's crazy early, they only started doing them in 81. The rear-wheel drive Mark I and II Escorts are revered these days because of their rallying heritage, and they command silly prices. But by the end of the 1970s, they were very much yesterday's prawn cocktail as family cars. Enter Project Erica, the new generation Escort with front-wheel drive hatchback practicality and very neat, well-proportioned and distinctively chunky styling. The car was an immediate hit from launch in 1980, quickly becoming Britain's best-selling car. And when the van version arrived in 1981, that went straight to the top of the sales charts too. The Mark III Escort was styled by Patrick Le Quémont under Uwe Barnsen, a partnership that later gave us the Ford Sierra, before Le Quémont moved on to Renault and styled the Twingo, Avon team and the first two generations of Megane, amongst others. I'm not 100% sure who did the van adaptation, but probably its most interesting styling feature was this slim extra window behind the side door. Unlike its predecessors, the van shared its doors with the five-door version of the car rather than the three-door, or four-door and two-door, if you follow. Anyway, the window gave that little bit of extra over-the-shoulder visibility because of the much narrower door. Even on this test drive, I managed to find that useful when pulling out of angled junctions, so it's more than just a styling gimmick, and perhaps it's surprising that it never caught on, even in the final generations of Escort. And it's eminently chuckable. It's a real hoot to drive. I'm not going very crazy fast. Uh, in fact, that building there is South Wales Police Headquarters, so I'm really not going very fast at all. But it's huge fun. I mean, there's some stuff in the back that's rattling around a bit, which makes it probably a bit noisier than it would ideally be. These big mirrors, the big door mirrors, really help as well. They're, uh, well, I say big, they're not vast by kind of modern SUV standards, I suppose, but they're pretty big for, a, for 1981. And um, you've got one on the passenger side as well. I don't know if that was standard on the 55L. I think the base ones just had just had a driver's side door mirror. But the L might have had the passenger as standard or it might have just been added on somewhere in the car's life. A reasonable view out of the, uh, the regular driving mirror as well. Obviously you've got the pillar of the uh, two twin rear 
doors slightly in the way, but that just kind of stops you reading the number plate of somebody who's tailgating. It doesn't really, you don't miss much. I'm going to be quite sad to give this back, you know. Do I need a van in my life? Can I think of any excuse to buy a van? Not really. It is for sale. Uh, by the time you see this video, there should be a, uh, a listing on, I'm not sure whether he's bidding on eBay or where, but somewhere, and I'll put a link in the description. If you're expecting a concourse condition show queen, you will be very disappointed. If you're expecting a van that uh, is mechanically well sorted, eminently drivable, uh, but very patinated and looks like a 1981 X-Reg Escort van did by about 1990, say, then this is absolutely for you. It's got you know, character in spades. It's got rust holes and scabbiness and flaky sign writing and all sorts of stuff. But underneath where it really matters, where the structure actually is, it seems pretty sound. I haven't been over it completely thoroughly, so you know I'm not offering you any kind of a warranty here. You know, make your own inspections. But it's had the good, it's had the important stuff done, and they've left all the history, and that for me is just perfect. Even the sign writing is, it's not fake. It was that guy's work van. Uh, and he looked after it and kept it running. And, and, and the sign writing is still there. It's not doing a kind of old van cosplay. It's just an old van. Bits have been replaced when they've worn out and some bits have worn out and they haven't been replaced because they don't really matter. And it's just, I love it. It's just got so much character. really drivable too. The steering's really nice. It's really nicely weighted. You can tell it's unassisted at parking speeds, but um, but it's not excessively heavy. I'm not the butchest guy ever to drive an Escort van, but uh, even so, it's no issue. And um, uh, and at you know road speeds, it's just really nicely weighted. When you think 1981, so uh, I think you know Bedford was still doing the HA based on the you know, the original Mark I Viva. The Maestro van was a couple of years away. The Marina van had been knocking about since, what, 72, 73? The Marina are even older, but the van, I think, was 72 or three. This was light years ahead of that stuff. Ford just had the playing field to itself for about three years. Half a model cycle. I don't want to give it back. What could I do with a van? So I start a man with a van business. Yeah, do you want anything delivered? A quick thank you at this point to Neil, the uh, owner of this van. He's got a few interesting cars and he's also got a car transportation business. I'll put his flyer up on the screen now. So if you need something moved, then uh, Neil could be your man.